Welcome back to How to Mobile Photo. I am Neeta Shankar, a wedding and lifestyle photographer from Bangalore. Macro photography is all about showcasing a subject larger than it is in real life. Macro photography is not always easy, especially for beginners, but it is one of the most rewarding genres of photography. With the right skills, you will be able to capture amazing images even in your own backyard and with a phone like the Redmi K50i. Today I'll be teaching how to shoot beautiful macro photos using the brand new smartphone Redmi K50i powered by MediaTek Dimensity 8100 processor. Here are some tips to capture some beautiful macro images with your phone. Firstly, get a phone with a built-in macro lens like the one we have in our hand or get an external macro lens for your phone. This lens is critical to shoot macro photos since we won't be able to shoot extreme close-ups otherwise. Other than macro lens, you will need a steady hand to take the shot or a tripod for your phone so that you don't introduce camera shake during photography. Find your subject. Insects and flowers work the best. Crucial to everything is finding a subject that works well in macro. Evidently, you need to think small, really small. Your garden or a nearby park will likely have all the subjects you need in one place. But finding them can be still difficult. My tip is to pay attention to small sections of plants or bushes, looking out for any small insects that may be clinging to stalks or hiding under leaves. It can be time consuming, but once you get the hang of how to find them and where they are more likely to be, it becomes easier. If insects aren't your thing, scan for interesting flowers, leaves, rocks, loose feathers or other natural items that may look totally different up close. Even textures on clothing, food or skin can look interesting when magnified in an image. Also, when shooting outdoors, be on the lookout for water droplets on flowers, leaves, grass or insects. Water refracts and reflects, producing stunning effects behind the lens. Choosing the right lighting As is the case with any type of photography, macro photography relies on good lighting. The simplest and most flattering lighting is usually natural light. But when the natural light isn't enough, you need to bring in an external light like a battery-powered LED to light your subject and get that perfect picture. A ring light or LED light allows you to be less dependent on natural lighting conditions. Wipe the camera lens. There is an old saying that says, to be a good worker, you must first sharpen your tool. So if you want to take a clear macro photo, it is advised to wipe the phone each time before shooting. Be patient. Patience is the key to do anything well. Sometimes, you might look around for a while and not find a suitable shooting object. Do not worry, perhaps you are looking at a place that is not suitable for animal or plant life. And for a patient photographer, you definitely need a highly efficient battery. While Redmi K50i 5G is built using the highly advanced TSMC 5nm N5 production, the MediaTek Dimensity 8100 processor gives exceptional power efficiency and longer battery life for the smartphone enabling a photographer to shoot longer duration. So take your time and enjoy the tiny world of macro photography. Establishing your point of focus. Macro photography means shooting at magnification and at small camera subject distances. This sometimes means your depth of field is so shallow that you don't have the entire subject in focus. The larger the magnification, the smaller the area of focus in your photo. While limiting, having a shallow depth of field can result in striking macro photos. If your intended subject is too large to fully capture, you can focus on only part of the subject. For example, if you are shooting a leaf, perhaps you could focus on the edges or a drop of rain clinging to the tip. And lastly, edit for impact. Editing your image is a great way of taking a simple picture and turning it into a truly artistic piece of work. I use Adobe Lightroom on Android to edit my shots, but I also work with Snapseed. Typically, I adjust the white balance to get a natural and accurate look to the color. Then I play with the exposure to make sure the highlights aren't too overpowering and that detail hasn't been lost in the dark shadows. I then edit purely based on what I think looks good. 
I may use an adjustment brush to paint more light into the subject to help it stand out or use a vignette to darken the edges of the frame thereby drawing the eye more towards the subject in the middle. With nature and wildlife, I want to make sure that I'm keeping the subject as natural as possible. I like to enhance the scene but not alter it. So I avoid dramatically changing colors or using too strong filters. There's no right or wrong way to edit. Enjoy tweaking those sliders to see what you can achieve with your newly captured set of captivating macro photos. Once the pictures are edited, it's time to transfer them. Thanks to the MediaTek Dimensity 8100, this is a piece of cake. This processor elevates the smartphone to new heights in performance using high-speed LPDDR5 RAM and UFS 3.1 ROM, making it one of the Redmi's fastest smartphones in memory and storage. Now, you can transfer files in a flash. That's it for today. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe to the channel for more such content. See you next week.